Good morning. Today we are starting the Erie Canal. We are here in Waterford where there is the branch of the Erie Canal and the Champlain Canal. And, and we are going west today, for the first time. And today we have the flight of five. Flight of five. Stir in line first. Okay. Oh my gosh, that looks so intimidating. Whoa, we're like literally going up into the mountain. It's time to celebrate. Hi, we're Jen, Elliot, and Ollie. In 2019, we left the United States and backpacked through 11 countries, all before deciding to come back home and try something completely new, pivoting into boat life. Our current adventure is America's Great Loop, a 6,000 mile journey through small towns, big cities, and the wilderness from the eastern portion of the United States, through the Great Lakes and Canada, and down the Midwest rivers all aboard our home on the water, Pivot. Make sure you subscribe as we share our journey through the highs, lows, and everything in between. We are starting our morning here in Waterford at the local farmer's market. Today is a Sunday, so we are taking advantage of the local activity for the day. The Waterford farmer's market is every Sunday from nine to one. Today they have some live music. A lot of people have been stopping through because this is on the trail from Albany. So a lot of people have been crossing over this bridge coming through and just exercising and passing through or even come to the market, it's pretty neat. It's a lot smaller than the market in Troy, obviously, but it's still, it's pretty neat. Usually for meals, I do a meal plan and I base it off of some different recipes that I wanna try or some of our favorite recipes and I get the exact ingredients that I need at the store. But this week I shopped completely at the farmer's market. We bought this beautiful loaf of sourdough bread and we're making breakfast sandwiches with some fresh eggs that we got at the farmer's market and some impossible sausage meats. And we're gonna to top it with some fruits and vegetables that we have. The Erie Canal is 524 miles long and raises 571 feet from Waterford all the way across the state of New York to Buffalo. The first lock that we're doing today is lock E2. We're rising 33 feet. Looks like they've started opening up the lock for us, which is just right here. And the first challenge is getting off the wall. So these cleats are pretty high up, pretty far back there. So it's gonna be a joint effort. Stir in line first. Okay. Okay, ready for bow line? Okay. Bow line is on the boat. I'm gonna go to the stern and help push off if we need it. Okay. You're all clear in the back. Oh my gosh, that looks so intimidating. The challenge is that when we start the flight of five, you can't stop the locks two through six. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. There's nowhere to stop once you start. So you're getting through it. That's what you gotta do. All right, what's our motto? Lower than slow. That's right. What side are we doing? Starboard? Yeah, we'll do starboard. Okay. Holy cow. All right, got this line. Whoa, 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 okay. All right. Holy cow, this is intimidating. This is wild. Look who we have here, Crustacean Station, Phil and Margie. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Pivot. <laughs> We're so high now. Right? This is crazy. Okay. All right, stern line is free. All right, bow line is free. I'll push off the stern. Pushing the stern off. Whoops. Pushing the stern off. <laughs> How cool! Bye, Bill! Bye, Margie! <sighs> How 
neat. Okay, these are a winner. We're on up over 30 feet for our second lock, yeah. just like the first. Wow. It's incredible. Holy cow. We are beginning lock number three, which is identified by the three right there. And we have the green light to tell us that we are good to go to enter into the lock. Okay, stern line is on. Bow line. This is unreal. Coming up 33 feet, we're in this like, I don't know, it's like, it's not a cave, but it's pretty, I don't know, it's like a cavern. It's just, you feel so small, you're dwarfed by these walls. Wow, and I have, I put on my gloves this time, because these lines are very slimy. You can't tell um, from the camera, but, whew. This is so cool. Yeah, this is amazing. Just the thinking about how much yeah, thinking about the history of the Erie Canal is just, it puts, every, like, it's crazy. And thinking about how much, how much elevation we've just gained in the past two locks is wild. Almost 70 feet already in like 15 minutes. <laughs> uh. We just completed lock three, which is the second lock of the flight of five. Whoa, we're like literally going up into the mountains. Yeah, we're going up into the mountains on our boat. Whoa. So far this is the third lock and it has the exact same system. So rope's coming down, let's throw up this little sparky thing on it. And then uh, we just tie off bow and stern. All these lines have this piece of metal weight on the ends. So that's what keeps them down, not into your propeller or mouth thruster. Wow. And the next lock in our flight of five. It's right there. Honestly, there's not many times I've ever been like tired boating or like doing the loop. But I went for a run today, about three and a half miles. I'm tired because of that, but I am actually physically tired from this. And we're not, I know there's a way to do the lines where you're not pulling on it, and I think that's how we're doing. Ready? is the fifth lock and the fourth lock on the flight of five. I'm scared, skirting around a little bit. Okay. Just, there is a lot of current. So it is really important to be focused on the task at hand. And not film. And not film. So that's why I grabbed the Focus. camera. Mm -hmm. 
That one was a little stressful. The wind just pushed us from the back and then the current was pulling us in so it was really hard for me to get close to the wall. It's just pushing me away. Oh man, I had to run downstairs and tie it off. But uh, we made it. So now we are going to the next slot in the flight of five. Here are the doors. And there's the lock. Can't say I'm actually enjoying captaining the boat through the flight of five. It's really pretty, but kind of stressful. As you dock and you undock, literally every five minutes, current wind pushing you and uh, 50 feet wide, or 40 feet wide, whatever it is, concrete area. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty, but yes, it is stressful because it's just one after another and you feel like you don't have enough time to like catch your breath. You're just go, 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 go. On top of everything, it's 93 degrees today. There's a heat wave across the country, so it's really hot. So we're sweating a lot. Um, the sun's beating down on us. It's midday. What time is it? 1.30? My watch says it's, I'm sleeping right now. It's just all this kinds of stuff is going on. Thank you, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Thought we were done. <laughs> After the five locks in the Fido Five, you have two guard gates, and the first guard gate was open for us, but the second guard gate, guard gate had to be open. And uh, they just opened it, gave us the green light, and uh, with this, it'll be the, the end of the flight of five. But I think we have one more lock in store for us today. But look at it, it's incredible. Like the rock, we're like literally in between rocks, like huge rocks too. It's crazy, this is nothing like what we've cruised in so far. It's awesome. It's crazy because you can think that like you're basically cruising through a mountain. This mountain has been dug out and carved so that way water can go through and we are cruising on it. It's wild. Conquered the flight of flight five. Of five. <laughs> wow, that was not easy, but but not bad. Like we didn't hit anything. Uh, we weren't supposed to. Yeah, thankfully we only had one other boat in the locks with us, so. Yeah, we didn't have to worry about boats kind of going around. Jackie B three, they were at the rendezvous, so we've been chatting on the radio, and um, yeah, it was just. That was an experience. It feels like we're kind of riding on like a super high elevation right now. It does. It, it fe like you feel it. Yeah, which um, is weird to say, but you do feel it. You do notice it. Yeah. One nice thing though is that as we're higher, it's gotten a bit more windy, which is a positive and a negative. Negative whenever you're trying to lock and it's moving your and boat in ways boat. that you don't want it to move your boat. But it's also nice because today is such a hot day and it's it's giving us a cool breeze to cool off. Yeah. And we just had to check our, our numbers and our length because we aren't actually quite sure where our destination is. And we have one more lock today. One more. And we are going to Scotia. Scotia. We're gonna dance to the song of the day. Mambo number five for the flight of five. I 
guess I really didn't think about this, but we have a lot of current against us right now here in the Mohawk River. But it makes sense because water flows downward and we're going upstream. We still are going up all these locks. So it makes sense why the current's against us. I just never really thought about and it. And we have the wind at our bow, so it's like we're flying, but we're not. We're only going six and a half knots. Approaching lock seven, which is the final lock for us for today. It's been a long day of locks, a very long day. And uh, we just hailed the Brit or the tender, uh, the lock tender, and uh, told him we'd be there in about six minutes. He said, uh, hold off, he's gonna raise some people and he'll re reopen it for us. So we're gonna dial it back a little bit um, so that we're not just waiting for nothing. And it is incredible, like just seeing this massive, like, wa damn waterfall. Uh, off to starboard and we're just gonna be going up to the top on the left It's wild our very last bridge of the day. Whoa! And then all we gotta do is dock this old girl. Oh, we're done. And then we're done. And then it's time for a special treat. So all of the bridges so far have had these 
like green and red signs as their markers to identify like which slot to go through. And this one actually has two, so it's identifying this slot and this slot. Good job, first man. Good job to you too. We did it. Nicely done. Good job at uh, Deck Swab, Ollie. It's our first day cruising the Erie Canal. So it's time to celebrate. Boom. Go Goritas. Go Goritas, baby. We picked these up in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't had them yet because we figured they're like frozen margaritas and they're also that some of them are flavored. But we thought they'd be perfect for hot summer days. And today is a hot summer day. It is, and we had a very uh, memorable day. It was our first time cruising these type of, this many locks. And the fly to five, the fly to five. Accomplished. Originally the Erie Canal was four feet deep and 40 feet wide, the whole canal. A lot of it had crafts and barges being pulled by mules. Had two major revamps over the years to make it what it is today. Yeah. And hence, that's at Waterford, we saw two mules that were painted and decorated, and they are to commemorate the mules that were initially pulling the barges or the, the stuff across yeah. the canal. Also, the Erie Canal has operated continuously since 1825. Crazy, huh? It, that's totally crazy. I mean, how many, we are in 2022, right? Almost 200 years. Yeah, almost 200 years of Actually, continual operation. Yeah, they, they celebrated the 200th anniversary, so that must have been like when it was first created or something recently. So it was our first day on the Erie. What was different than what you expected? What are some like interesting things that you're like, wow, I didn't really think of that. So there's a lot of jet skis that run on the Erie Canal and the jet skis are they're not just not a boat so like I get that they're a water they're a vehicle in the water but they don't act like a regular boat does so they're less predictable so it kind of makes it a little bit more like it's not stressful but like we always have to be like mentally aware of like where's the jet ski at where's the person at is the person on the jet ski Has it, have they fallen off the jet ski because we've had that experience too in Florida and so like, that was something I did not expect. What about you? One thing I didn't expect was how chill the lock tenders were. Mm. After you go through the first lock, that lock tender then radios ahead for you to the rest of the locks in the flight of five. So they kind of, they know you're coming and you can tie up on any side of the, any side of the lock. And then they use the lights to kind of say, green light go, red light don't go. And so it was very much like a, you just kind of go through, you know, and there wasn't a lot of communication with the tenders and even we communicated some, but then sometimes we heard other people communicate and then like the, the, the tender seemed a little like, you know, like, why are you letting me know it's, why are you calling me out? It's green, go ahead and, um, and I think that shocked me was that one lock where they raised the water so quickly that pivot kept getting really shoved against the wall and we have plenty of fenders but the fenders were getting caught on the concrete. So we were worried that the, the fender would pop or the fender would really like pull the boat down, kind of like if you had like hot line. And then like one of those lines would break or something would happen. Yeah. It's kind of very stressful. And I and what I've, we've heard is that there is some discretion in the lock tender. They can open them, open the locks kind quickly of quickly or, or slowly. Yeah. So cool like how you're in those lock chambers and the doors close behind you it's like oh, wow it's just jaw dropping and then some of the sights after coming through the locks were just really pretty going in between rock bases and everything it was, it was awesome the start of it 
has been really cool. We have quite a few more days left on the Aerie, so make sure you're subscribed to see them. Yeah, I think I was also really surprised by like the scale of the doors that close behind you. Like we tried to stay at the further end, like towards the back of the lock at any time that we could. But each time that the doors are closing or each time that you're passing through these doors, they're massive. Their scale is just enormous. And as you're passing through and they're closing, like you feel like an ant. And it's really, it's yeah. quite humbling and quite grounding because you're just like, so small in this very large chamber and um it was a very cool experience very cool now if you enjoyed coming along with us on this leg of the eerie make sure you like this video but for now jen's gonna get started on some dinner yeah tonight i'm making sweet potato black bean avocado tacos oh man tacos so it and should be more good margaritas and more margaritas Woo! Tacos. It is Taco Sunday, but it is a quick meal, good for us to end the day and give us energy to go on tomorrow. And make sure to follow along because tomorrow we're continuing on the Erie. See you then. Holy cow! Oh my gosh! Holy cow! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, we're starting! Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow, this is intimidating. Holy cow. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Nothing. It was a leaf. So far, this is the third lock, and this. I, I'm just talking to the camera. We got the wind in our, in our bow. Wow. So originally the Erie Canal. It's okay, Alan. One thing I didn't expect was how like lies lies lays affair. What? Lies affair. Lays affair. Lays affair. How chill.